Hello, good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope all is well. Yes, I'm practically about to get in the car. But I thought I would just give you a little scene and then go in the car to record because it's a bit too noisy. But this is Florida in the morning time and uh, I'm here and I'm just going to take you on a journey. So let's get into our topic. Yes, as a matter of fact, I would say to you that outside was very noisy, so I had to come back inside to do this one. I did do a recording of this the other day and realized that it was deleted accidentally. So I'm going off by memory to ensure that I address the issue. The issue is really about the digital divide. We already know that we are practically in a situation where some people have access to technology and others don't. And this is more significant as we think about AI. And I want to start off with something that happened recently. I was speaking to someone and the person said they had reached out to me and I said, you know what? If you reach out to me, I'm always happy to share information. So I set up a meeting with this individual, just a one-to-one, -to, -one, to guide this individual regarding the capabilities of using AI. I did demonstrate a few things and after the demonstration, she was convinced that this was a tool that she wanted. Let me see, she was excited and she said that she would ask her department and with certainty, her department would give her that. that it means that they're able to be more productive. So what I'm saying, we need to upscale everyone as it relates to AI. We need to allow individuals to use these tools and leverage these tools. And it goes on to teaching and learning too. If teachers have access and students don't, then there's a disparity. If some students are able to access certain AI tools and others don't, then we have inequality. The digital divide will widen. Let me give a shout out to the Caribbean people. That's important for us to look at. We can't be left behind. I want to say that we cannot operate in a fragmented zone. We have to come and work collaboratively as it relates to artificial intelligence. I have not yet seen a document produced by CARICOM, but I'm waiting for that document because that document is important. We need to produce one for the Caribbean. And why it's important? We have to safeguard ourselves. And when I talk about safeguarding ourselves, we have to bring in ethical guidelines for the development of AI for our country. We cannot 
depend on developed countries, quotation, developed countries, to build a framework for us. When it comes down to ethics and algorithms and AI, that's another topic. But back to the point, we need to ensure that we give people access to the technologies. Now, some individuals might say, you know what, AI can do everything. The reality is that it can't. You have to have critical thinking. If you do not have access, you can't be productive. I work with an institution that gives me access to many of these tools. I enjoy using these tools. But most of all, I have found value in these tools. The Caribbean people and people listening to this need to understand that there are powerful mechanisms out there that individuals from the United States will come and say, this is a document that you can use, or this is a software that you can use, but you could develop it yourself and not pay for that. There's so many things out there. I want to say that if we continue the pathway of not exploring, not engaging with these tools, we have a problem. Because some people in our society will be using them. We can see content creators using some of them, but what about educators using this and harnessing that technology? So let me say that if we do not proactively address the inclusion of some of these tools, some people in our society will leverage the AI at a point that you can't understand how productive they are, while others will not be as productive without these tools because you're judging them on those who have access to those tools. So what do I say to the individual? And I started talking about this individual who has no access. Sometimes you have to invest in these tools. The tool that she might have wanted was roughly $400 US a year. But I won't tell you, I will tell you at this point, it could have made her job more productive. But someone else in that organization will have that same tool and she will look as if she's not producing because she can't work at the speed necessary. You know, I want to say that AI is not there to replace people, but to enhance your creativity, enhance your productivity, allow you to focus on things that, as a human, you need to focus on. And having said that, it's important that we realize that if individuals do not have access to tools and software and things that can, of course, enhance their lives, while others have, we're kind of reproducing inequality in our society. We're saying that some people deserve while others don't. We're saying that, you know what, you're not valued. Because when the top producers have all of these tools and individuals in the middle or the bottom have none, it's inequality. And that is a moral obligation that institutions, if you can afford it, give the people the tools they want. Don't allow them to struggle when you can use your chat GPT that you paid for, you can use your Microsoft 360 and so forth to do the work. Support the work, support the journey. Let everyone understand that AI is not for some, but it's for everyone to use. I'm out. Thanks for listening.